way up. Uh, back to Sherlock 2000, Land Rover garage of very many wintry tyre things. Uh, and I'm here very quickly going to chat to you about the brand new Acapulita 10. Uh, my pal's having them fitted to, to the car, I'm just about to bob them on now. This is a standard winter tyre that she's been running for a little while. And, uh, and you can see the overall design is a little similar. You can see the kind of the... I better just turn this tyre around so it can make sense to you. But you can see that there's um, an overall kind of design that's similar. Now, I, this is my preferred tyre size. I recommended that she buy the 255, 55, 20. On an L322, you can fit this tyre straight on without making any additional uh, changes to the vehicle. This is the stock tyre. This is the 255, 50, 20. Uh, just a little lower profile and you can see you can see the difference in height this will give you an extra inch overall and you can see there's a roughly kind of similar kind of you know that track the tire thing but this tends very interesting it's the first time I've, I've sort of seen one on a tire again Nokia, Nokian's uh, super successful um, sidewall aramid sidewall uh, and their exclusive rubber compound which is quite soft yet extremely durable this 10 has more of a road bias, as you can see, than the Acapulita 9 that I have on mine. And, and when I get mine back at the house here, we'll perhaps compare them. Uh, my studs have, have become all rounded and these are quite a lot more prominent. Again, Nokian have provided a different stud design on the outside of the tire than on the inside of the tire. Uh, and if Nicky can just come in, I don't know if you can zoom in on the shape of the uh, of the stud here but you'll see that this stud has a different shape than this stud here and that's because the tyre the, the studs are designed to gain um, traction while they're turning so as you turn they're always biting on a fresh angle so these outside studs are, uh, are better than well a different design than the inside so different shape and different uh, uh, different uh, angle um, Again, you've got the brakes in here to get rid of the water. Uh, you've got the dispersal area to get rid of the slush that I mentioned earlier on. You are missing on this tire, the, the more aggressive kind of chunkiness that the uh, SU, the uh, Nokian Hacapolita 9 has that allows you to dig away in deep snow. So these are gonna be slightly more road biased, but a significant improvement on a, I don't know what this is, a standard sort of wintery thing. I don't know what it is, some no name thing. Um, anyway, these tyres are going to go on. I should have really taken a photograph of the of the vehicle with a with a standard tyre size on, and then compared with this 255. You can buy the 255, 55, 20 in the Jura track, and uh, as as happy as I am with the the Nokian uh, Outpost AT, and I'm very very happy with it. I'm actually really disappointed with the size. These narrower tyres really do provide much more grip in snow and ice. And that extra two inches that you're extra inch you're going to get with a 275 doesn't actually impress me much and it does increase the chance of aquaplaning and all the such things um and i also don't like the extra inch height that the 275 55 20 has over this here uh, and this particular tire is size is, is perfect so as i said the dura track's available in this size and and this uh, obviously the hackapolita 10 is available in this size i think you can still get the hackapolita 9 uh although nikki's shaking her head so perhaps she can't but i i have seen on the caltire website the nine is still available there and in this size if you're buying it this season my bet would be the the hackapolita nine if you're going in deep snow if you're a town and city driver and you're transiting between you know cities stick with the 10 it's probably going to provide you much more traction on the highway but a little less performance in deep snow uh, and if Nikki just comes around here you'll just be able to see the height difference and we'll sneak these tires up a touch more and you'll just see that extra inch isn't massive but when you put it on the vehicle it just gives it a little bit more presence and I think it'll be a nicer size uh, my favorite size tire now the other the last thing I'm going to mention and if Nikki can come back to the front the last thing I'm going to mention is that this rim that she's got here is a, is a Range Rover Sport rim from a 2010 uh, and it's a nine and a half inch rim and one of the downsides to a wider rim 
if there is one on a winter tire is that your your outside of your tire becomes quite flush with the rim meaning it's easier to curb it these obviously this is not nikki's doing this is what happened when she got the tires the tires were on them but this having a wider rim here means that the outside the shoulders and the sidewalls of the tire these aramid sidewalls as good as they are still don't provide much bulging here in terms of this um this wider rim now i'm just going to wheel this away it's a nikki's standard tire uh, which, if I can get that tire to stay where I need it to, this is this is a, one of the nicest tire designs on the on the L322. I wish I had got these on mine. This it always reminds me of the United the British flag. But any road, you can see that this is an eight and a half inch uh, rim, and you can see here there's a bulge that comes into the tire with these thick shoulders that allow less chance of curbing. And so this narrower tire, this narrower rim width gives you the opportunity to suck the tire in at the pinch point here and give you this little balloon, this comfort area, which makes it less susceptible to, you know, curbing or what have you, which is a bit of a problem in the winter when the curb, is, you don't actually know where it is because it's often covered in snow and ice. But anyway, if you can get an eight and a half inch rim, always put an eight and a half inch rim on instead of the nine and a half inch rim, but the nine and a half inch will fit. Um, and basically that's all I've got to say. This is the winter tyre that Nikki's running. She's going to run this off in the summer because it's not a very good winter tyre, but it'll be quite an adequate summer tyre. Um, we'll run them off over the next couple of years and, and then put on something a bit a bit more, you know, a bit, a bit more decent. So I've just come for, put this wheel on of, of, of Nikki's ear and, and I was just telling her how to go about looking at the underneath the, the body. And what you get often on these uh these air suspension bags and it and it contributes to premature failure of the airbag itself is you get dirt that adheres to this cone this this cone here he says trying to get out of the shadows um and it, and it sort of sticks and you can just see here a bit of the trail of debris and you just rub it off when you come to change your wheels you just rub it off and i've got a little wire brushy thing and i just go around it and get rid of that and what it does is it just protects this bag a bit from all of the material that's building up here because when the bag replaces itself over here it chafes in this spot and causes premature bag failure and just take your hand rub it around to get rid of all that debris it'll naturally pick it up and there's not much you can do about it really but if you do just clean these cones each time you jack the car up you do increase the life of it you can see how it had ears here and the other thing, and I keep stressing this when, when, I, when folk go and have a vehicle like this and they, they wonder why it's always breaking down. Well, you've got to keep your eye on, on what's going on so you know about your car. This is British sort of design, really. I know it's not what people like to do these days because they won't buy a car and have no, no issues with it. But when you start doing things like this, just check that all of these things are in good order and there's no breaks in the cables and they're all in the right clips and they're all... You know, they're, they're not broken or torn or hanging out or hanging loose. Check this, check your brake pipes to make sure that they're still in good order and they're not rusted through. And, because if you lose one of these, you know, you can you can burst it. Make sure these rubber flexible hoses don't have any cracks in them in virtue of damage. You can come round this side and you can have a look at the boot uh, on the steering rack here make sure that isn't split while you're down here it's a bit hard for me to show you but while you're down here you can have a look at these boots here on the cv boots um to make sure they're not hanging out and they're still sealed up and you can have a look at the this ball joint here to make sure that it's uh you know it, it's got no play in it and have a look at these uh these suspension components to see what the bushes are like and it just gives you a rough idea if you look at that one there you can see it's in good order if you just have a look around it while you're looking, you can see if you can see any oil leaks and all other th things and all that sort of stuff. And one of the things I noticed, very first thing I noticed when I popped the car is that there's the, the plate, I don't know what you call it really, dust guard I suppose you'd call it, wouldn't you, that fits here and covers the side of the engine is missing. And so I've, I've told Nikki that she's got to go and call around a few wreckers yards and find one because they, they're easy to fit, they're easy to come across and they, you won't pour them back, they're there for a reason. And it's just these little, it's just these little jobs that help you avoid bigger problems later on. You know, if if this ride height sensor's loose, or if it's broken at the bottom, or if the plug's coming out to look stonky, or something like that. You know, these these little things. You only take a few minutes when you're spinning rims or something. Have a look at your brakes and 
have a look if these pins are still in place and the, the springs are, haven't rusted through, you know, and you can tell on this one here, I've had, I've had a chat to Nicky about it, that the next time she does brakes, which will probably be next year, year after, um, these rotors will want replacing because they're, they're a bit worn. And just doing this sort of a job, you know, it helps you helps you keep on top of it. And when folks say, oh, my car broke down, well, everything that's mechanical breaks, but there's things you can do for it just help it last a bit longer and sort of uh, preempt these failures and sort of rectify bits before they cause your major breakdowns on the side of the road. Any road, that's basically all I want to just say while we're fitting these fancy new tyres. Look at that. Shiny. Um... And with that, thanks very much for tuning into uh, Shadlock 2000's Land Rover channel. Just a quick one, this was, what was that, like seven minutes? Um, rocking, bowling. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll throw a couple of photographs of the, the fancy tyres when she, we bobs them on. I'll try and throw those into the thing and, and I'll give you one last look at this pretty rim. I've no idea what it's called, this rim. I should probably, it probably got a code somewhere, aren't it? One of you lads will tell me what it's called. But anyway, my, my favourite rim is this. Anyway, that's all for now. See you next time. Cheerio.